No other than this is probably the most fun we've had in four years. <laughs> uh, we've had uh, <clears throat> been able to to add a lot of projects, not only here in this area, but also across our district. And uh, the reason for that is not that there's more revenue coming in. Revenue, by the way, seems to be stabilizing, a little bit up, a little bit down each time a revenue estimating conference takes place. Uh, but we have, as, as I know the counties have too, uh, experienced some very good bids, which uh, not only gives us that that uh, extra funds that are uh, that are uh, the result of getting good bids, but also allows us to lower our cost estimates. Therefore, we can we can build more for the revenue that we do receive. So, uh, being able to to account for some of these things is uh, is something I know you all have been waiting for for a long time, and, and it's it's good to to be able to uh, provide some of these projects. Commissioner McClash. I do, I do have um, three questions, um, and I'd like to make sure that hopefully the county staff, uh, Saji, if, if you would, um, on <coughs> Fifth Street and Cortez Road, that project there is, is an issue um, as far as that you pretty much are going to uh, devastate a business, the car wash there on Cortez Road that's been there for years. The design that you have is uh, putting in a uh, hardened you know, curb uh, with the turn lane uh, I just I just have a real difficult time doing that to a business, you know, that's that struggling. Median? Yeah, where you have to put in the median. So if, if you have to put a median, you, the way that car wash operation uh, works, you, you would just kill them. And I, I don't think there's really a dangerous uh, intersection there. It's just one that you're trying to, you know, normally bring up to standards. But that one, you really would have a devastating impact on that business. So if, if you all could take a look at that, I've talked to the business owner and, and um, you know, just you're basically going to put them out of business if you put a curb up there or a median up that prevents people from pulling directly in. The other is Cortez and 41. I'd just like to know what are we doing this time? Uh, it's it's in a transportation improvement program again, and we haven't been given a heads up as far as what improvements that you're planning. We just redid this whole intersection five years ago when the Lowe's went in there. So what's what's needing to be done? Um, so that's that's a question that I have. And then my other question, the last question is, why didn't we um, include the signal preemption um, into the work program versus some of the other intersection improvements? The signal of preemption is a, um, about an $800,000 cost, I believe, that we were shooting with the ATIS system. It's unfunded, to my knowledge. And when you're looking at putting in a traffic signal update, which the traffic signal is just going from wire and concrete poles to the mast arm, it might be better for us to transition into that, into the signal preemption and take care of all the um, ITS system that we're working on. So I, I know we got some extra monies there, and, and it looks like staff went ahead and uh, allocated that. So I'd just like to make sure that if there's a possibility for us to readdress that, we can. Uh, Commissioner McClash, I, th I believe we've got that in there in uh, this coming fiscal year, fiscal year 12. Which page are you on? Um, I didn't on see page that. Six, page 6, uh, the next. Where's the one? You do have a signal. Uh, oh, okay. I, maybe you don't have the same version here. Yeah. This, this is an updated one. Okay. He has it. He has it. I read that. I just don't So, where do they have it? In his book? Okay, well, maybe you do have it. I think. Are you I didn't at page see six? It. Are you on page six? I'm on the, page six, but it starts off with ITS freeway management up on top. Well, the, the position. This is the retiring. Let me get back to you. And yeah, I don't think the preemption's in there, so it, I, I just want to raise that concern. So, you know, it's nothing critical. We could always come back and, and amend it a little bit. Uh, because this is the draft, so the draft for the new members, this this is what's being proposed, but until the state Correct. legislature deals Correct. with it, yes. then it becomes a little bit more final at that time, and then we adopt it again in July. That's why we're here to, so to get just, your comments. This is just the draft, so I just want to put those comments on the record. Thank you. Thank you. Other than that, I just do want to say thank you for the additional projects in the work program. Both counties really received a great benefit, especially Sarasota County. I'm still waiting for our bonus year. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Director Howe. Um, basically, I just want to give a couple summaries here for the public's purpose as well. Uh, all told, there's about um, $500 million um, that are, are, are being uh, comprised or constituted by this five-year work program that's being invested in the two-county area. Of that, there's approximately $150 million of new highway dollars in this five-year program compared to last. Um, as far as the MPO's priorities, um, very good news to have our number one priority, the construction of the Venice Bypass, the middle and northern segments, finally being con constructed. This is a this was smart planning by FDOT. I'll compliment them as far as advancing the right of way to reduce the cost in order to afford the construction and get it done in a, a subsequent years, 15 and 16. So you're only going to tear that road up once. So I think that's very smart uh, planning on their part. Uh, the number one trip project that was mentioned during the film for US 301 up in Manatee, very important. And uh, a lot of safety dollars in this project. Um, and, and that's some of those intersections you'll see listed. But, uh, you know, all told, probably about 15 or $20 million worth of uh, safety funds. But um, considering the, the, the tough programs we've been through, as Secretary Can stated earlier, um, this, was, this was a solid program for the two-county area, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else on the board? Chair. Commissioner Garofalo. I have a question, Stan. Um, as far as the transportation disadvantage portion, um, we had talked, you know, I, I represent, I'm the chair for that board, and we had talked about um, <clears throat> basically seeing about an effort for Manatee and Sarasota County together, and I didn't know if FDOT w would uh, support something like that, if there could be dollars saved. And I know we had the SCAT and the MCAT discussion. This is kind of something totally different. And I didn't know if that would be something that would be on the radar where you would think that we would get support um, so we could save some dollars in that. I saw it in the work program. Uh, let me check into that for you. Okay. I, 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 I wanted to talk to you prior to this, but I see it in a work program, and it's kind of, you know, getting the wheels turning here. Um, we do spend money, and, and if we had a conjoined effort between the two counties, especially in the transportation disadvantage, I know that there's, there's dollars to be saved. So. I'd love to talk to you about that. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councilman Bennett. Is it a good time for me to uh, a second Mr. Howe and say that I have made whatever comments I felt necessary about the issues involved in both this five-year plan and um, our later program we're going to discuss, and that I'm satisfied for the near term. I also have a request from uh, a member of the public to speak, if the board, Commissioner Patterson. Can I, can I ask something first? Yes. Um, on page four, at the bottom of the page, um, the Honoré Avenue extension, Sarasota County. Yeah, Sarasota County, the tentative work program. Um, is is that the section of honorary that the trip funds are involved in, or I'm yeah. not seeing that? Right. Six million of trip is in there. Six million. In yeah. Fiscal year 14. Okay, then the assumption is the 8.4 comes from oh. from the county. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, the six million trip funds are programmed in there, and the additional dollars are programmed in from the county. So, so at this point, we're anticipating those dollars. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay. At this point, I'd like to ask Rod Warner, who filled out a comment card, to come forward and speak on the F. Dot Five Year Draft Tentative Five Year Work Plan. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> some context. The FDOT work plan follows the MPO priority list that you adopted last summer. Low bids are not MPO income to spend runs around $14 million a year. Sarasota share is half of that. The FDOT work plan begins spending $36 million next year to buy Venice bypass right away. Right away, two-thirds of the $54 million cost to construct 
1.2 miles of six lanes there. Cost benefit is what? Yet, by FDOT count, the traffic volume through the Venice Bypass is significantly less than the US 41 through Sarasota, which will remain four lanes. The Venice Bypass has never done a mobility study with citizen input and transportation professionals to learn what residents there really want. Bradenton and Sarasota did that. They did those studies, and the outcome, multimodal, four lanes. What redeeming economic value can come from the state taking two lanes of commercial land from the Venice tax base, trying to speed customers past businesses faster? A four-lane multimodal corridor there would make access to businesses easier and raise property values as it always does elsewhere in the USA. What's the redeeming social value <clears throat> to Venice residents in six-laning a Venice bypass dedicated to vehicles destined beyond? What's redeeming in arguing They've waited so long, 20 years. Stop the FDOT purchase of Venice right away next year. More than 20. If that begins by this plan, residents in both Venice and Sarasota will wait at least another five years before any US 41 construction is completed that anybody can actually use. First best use of taxpayer money is a US 41 multimodal corridor delivering improved mobility to more people sooner at less cost. That's exactly the MPO position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warner. I don't have cards from anyone else in the public, uh, but anyone else want to get up and address the board on, on the uh, draft of the five-year work plan? Okay. So. Motion uh, recommended action. I, I had a question if you don't mind. I mean, it's just <coughs> endorsement of it. So sure. I yield it, maybe for both Mr. Howe and Mr. Can, Mr. Warner <coughs> had a, an op-ed in today's Sarasota Herald Tribune, and I've already uh, received emails from people asking some of the questions that, that he's asked. Number one, probably most importantly, we obviously adopted this last July. Uh, is that pretty much left the train in July, first off? And I know that Councilman Bennett, I don't, not to be heretical and even broaching the subject, but can you address what Mr. Warner has just stated? Certainly. Um, the, the process of developing transportation projects is a lengthy one. I think all of us realize average and length of time to do a project with federal and state dollars is from concept idea to actual consummation development of the project is about 12 or 13 years. Um, our major improvement project priority list, which only has 17 projects on it, is not only a transportation efficiency document, but it's a political document as well, uh, taking in the balancing needs of the various 10 members of this MPO. Um, the Venice community, the elected officials at that time, saw fit to submit back in the 1990s the Venice bypass as an alternative means to help their community. That was a decision made back then. I agree with Mr. Warner in that regard. But they have then matured on the priority list, the position of number one priority. There's been approximately probably 10 million in design and project development and environmental expended on this bypass already by FDOT in getting ready for the actual project. Um, it's a difficult decision. I understand his point. I think we all do. We're making a move in that direction with the long-range plan we're going to be talking about. But that Venice decision and the actual process of that has something that's evolved over the last 15 <coughs> years. And I don't think it's fair to the Venice community to take that away from them midstream. And I would agree. I, I guess the question is, and, and knowing we're six laning 301 through uh, pretty much the northern end of Sarasota right now, and the district representative for uh, that end of the community, Commissioner Atkins, uh, has probably been the biggest uh, 
uh, critic in how uh, disappointed he is, the members of his district are in the massiveness now of a six-lane road and this geographic separation and, and uh, disruption it is to the community. And so for I, I know that I've sat here for four years on this MPO. Uh, to my recollection, we've never really had that conversation about what what will this look like? What are these long-term benefits that Mr. Warner's talking about? I realize that this is late in the game, but if you listen to the conversations that were just had in, in November's elections, if you listen to the hand-wringing uh, by our governor with what he's going to do and, and, and look at priorities, uh, I, I can't help but put here as part of the public record that I would certainly support what Mr. Warner's talking about. I know in the in the TAC meeting, the, the young woman from Venice who, who spoke today had said specifically for this most southern terminus that she wanted to be included in the multimodal investment. I would say from, from our perspective as an MPO board that if, if we say that this is a major improvement project priority that has been waiting for this long, then it should stay in that number one position. But my question is, is there a way to do it that's cheaper? Is there a way to do it that's better for the residents of Venice? Is there a way to do it that's better for our MPO? And maybe we're just too late to the party to do it, but when we're talking five years and the allocation of 50 plus million dollars for a road segment that's 1.2 miles, I don't think we're having a responsible conversation if we're just making a motion approving it, knowing the future forecast for state revenues for the next two to three years continue to be pretty uh, dim at best, and, and it's not, I, I think, responsible for our entire MPO. If I could uh, respond just briefly. Um, the, the total funding for that middle and northern segment um, is now in this five-year work plan, and I um, that is the, the money we're talking about for right-of-way um, and for the construction, so it's fully funded. Your, your point, though, certainly it could be done cheaper if you keep it at four lanes, which is being proposed now on the southern segment of it. Um, I can't, uh, you know, even, you know, explain, you know, where the Venice community is, and I think that's better a question for them. I can tell you when we came down to the long run, came down to do our presentations to all the governing bodies. I was at the Venice City Council meeting here about a month ago, and it was a clear indication that they actually wanted the entire bypass still, they being the City Council, you know, six lane. So at least that was the consensus of the City Council, and I'd have to defer to Councilman Bennett if there's been a change of heart of that. There's been no change of heart. In fact, there's been further conversation among members of the public to the same effect. Okay. I have Commissioner Patterson followed by Commissioner Garofalo. Well, a couple of things. Uh, the Sarasota County Commission did have essentially the same discussion last week. And um, we did a double check by asking our administrator to talk to the Venice administrator um, and, and make sure that that was still the will of the commission. And the answer came back, just as Councilman Bennett has said, that not only are they supportive of the five-year work program, but not real happy at the thought of removing six lane from the long-range transportation plant. You know, in looking at the concept of multimodal, um, you know, and this is just me, um, to me, it implies that you have a pretty good transit system. Otherwise, you know, what you're talking about is making things more pedestrian friendly and bike rate lanes, which I think are probably included in the plans for the widening of the Venice Bypass. It's really tough if you have a congested road, folks, to um, have a dedicated bus lane, bus lane when you've only got uh, um, two lanes in either direction to take a really congested road and, and, and make uh, one lane of the two in one direction uh, a dedicated bus lane, um, you have to have a really crackerjack public transit system, which will be quite a while before we can look at it. So that's one of the things that goes through my head. The other is I remember a couple of years ago, and I say this to Councilman Bennett um, with regard to the long-range transportation plan, that Venice City Council really was exploring and, in fact, hired Wilson Miller to discuss 
four-laning of the entire by bypass, and I think that, that what they came back with was the southern segment was quite appropriate for that, um, but I didn't see any movement. So that in terms of the intersection and the northern segment, and so it's not that the issue has gone undiscussed um, by the citizens in Venice. Anyway, that's just the world according to me. Commissioner Garofalo. Yes, Chair. In this, uh, uh, Commissioner Kirshner brings up a good point, or Mayor Kirshner, excuse me. Um, you know, when this, uh, our, our objective of the NPO is to move people. You know, that's what we have to do. We have to get people to one place to the next. Um, and years ago, uh, before Northport was, you know, even really on the map, um, Venice was the southernmost area, and, and the bypass was created to move people, to get them not congested, because they weren't going to go south, and if they did, they had a two-lane road, four lane at best, 41 going through Northport. Um, and your east-west connectors, River Road, Sumter, Toledo Blade, really weren't that important in the whole aspect because you didn't really need to worry about going south through Northport. And maybe it's the paramedic in me, but it's about, I, I'd like to refer to it as almost like the cardiac structure, your heart, and putting a stent in and fixing things. Um, I think through the years, we, we've had different priorities and objectives have changed. And with Northport, what's happened down there, having east-west connectors, and although we're very far from River Road, and that's what we're pushing for it, but Sumter Boulevard's another east-west connector that kind of, you know, lets the stuff move down south in South County now, um, where Venice Bypass may have not been as a, uh, I don't want to call it a priority, because I do not want to shun the city of Venice, because I think it is a priority, and they're still saying it's a priority, so they know their city better. But if we, our object is to move people, and we're seeing study after study with multimodal actually moving people better, why not at least look at that? Um, and I do think priorities have changed. So I'm not going to come out and say I support fully Mr. Warner's uh, uh, comments, but I do think times have changed. And, and, and when you're moving, we, we, we essentially, by building up Northport the way we did, or just by chance, have relieved some of that from Venice in the southern area. And uh, that has to be something on, on, on the mind of, of this board and future boards to realize. I understand we're about to spend seven and a half million dollars next year for right away. Well, and yeah. uh, now's the time to look at it if we really want to do that or move to, towards multimodal. But like Commissioner Patterson said, this is something that's been vetted and the county commissioner uh, had directed their staff to talk with Venice. And, you know, I, I, would, I would support it the way it is now. But for the future, like Mr. Howe said, we have 12, 14, 15 year pro, you know, out, out projects that may change priorities from time to time. So we have to look at that. But I would ask Commissioner Bennett or Councilman Bennett to understand maybe years ago where that came from and then where that congestion was, where I think it has been addressed a lot. Just driving those roads myself, current. Okay. Commissioner McClash. Well, I think the bigger question is, is when can you live with a four-lane road versus a six-lane road? And, you know, it really damages communities, I believe, when you go from a four-lane to a six-lane because and not only do you hurt the pedestrian movements crossing over the extra distance, but it, it's also where you destroy the businesses on each side of the roadway. And we had a very similar situation in Manatee County on Cortez Road by the mall from 41 eastbound. It was slated to be six lane. We ran into the it, astronomical co cost. And so what we did is um, looked at it again and it, we were able to live with intersection improvements. So basically you have the intersections blown up, then you go back to a four lane and then an intersection blown up. And I think that's what you're looking at as one of your options there as well in that four lane section. And if you want to look at something that's worked moderately well, you could probably look at that section of Cortez Road. So I support you know, keeping it in there. Uh, Venice has, has had it this close and it's always kind of been pulled back. Um, I think it's over 20 somewhat years. This project, I believe, started in the mid 80s, actually, the original PDNA. It's, so that, it's a very, very long time coming, and it's always been a cost uh, issue. And so now that it's funded, um, I think there's been a lot of community input over the years, to tell you the truth, and everything's always in a state of flux. But if you take it away now, I think it's just not going to be the right decision. But I would like to have a discussion at the MPO of what you could really live with if we go into this multimodal world. You know, when, when do you adjust the numbers for the consultants? Because it's all consultant driven. You know, they say when it exceeds the capacity of this, then you need to go to six lane. But how far over, you know, 
is that and you know if it's only ten percent over or twenty percent over well maybe you should be able to live with your four lanes and and um, you know a lot of times we we lose a level of service but what's more important than level of service to me is the time it takes to get somewhere if if, if it's the same amount of time approximately go from point A to point B then uh, maybe we shouldn't have to improve all these roads from four to six all the time so that's we're going to face this throughout the whole area. Mm -hmm. uh, Palmetto's faced it. City Bradenton's faced it. It's it's not a new issue, uh, but I support leaving it in there. Commissioner Barbata. Well, uh, we had this discussion, as Commissioner Patterson said, at our board meeting, at least for the segment south of uh, of uh, Ben Saturday. We we definitely talked about the intersection improvements as being extremely important. And I don't think we were quite sure whether the northern portion of Venice Avenue up to Bird Bay Drive was actually going to go six lanes or not. We had a little bit of confusion. I personally have a real hard time. I'm not comfortable at all with making it six lanes. I understand it's been on the books for a long, long time. I understand that there's a, there's sign of kind of a moral feeling that we owe it to the city of Venice, but I think in reality as transportation planners, it's not the right thing to do. I don't think it moves that much more traffic, uh, if at all. And you, all you're doing is taking six lanes down into four lanes uh, through a busy intersection. Uh, if you move people two seconds faster, is it worth the millions and millions of dollars we're spending versus uh, uh, modifying the roadway to be more, you know, boulevard, but pedestrian friendly, still four lanes and using the money for uh, multimodal improvements. So I've got a real hard time supporting this. Mr. Warner's right on the money. He really is. When you, when you take the cost of right of way, and if you look at the right of way through that whole area, it's all commercial. It's all high dollar. <coughs> and I think if the Venice taxpayers were to really look at the, the, the time savings, if there's any at all, of widening it to six lanes, how fast you're going to move that traffic versus the cost of taking that property off the tax rolls and, and the cost of investing <coughs> in the right of way to make it a, uh, an airplane landing strip is what I call six lane highways. I think it's the wrong thing to do. Commissioner Hayes. Yes, I'd like to continue on with uh, what Commissioner Barbetta just said. When you take a road that's four, uh, go from four lane to six lane or six lane to four lane, you're creating a real safety issue. I think that's one issue we have to look at. And the other thing that we have to look at, and we're looking at in Manatee County, and I'm sure all the counties are looking at, situation has changed due to the economy. A lot of areas that where we needed uh, to add additional lanes, that's not always the solution. You, you must be, uh, as was mentioned before, too, you have to be very friendly to business. We, we can't afford to lose any more businesses, plus take things off the tax roll. Um, as Mr. Barbetta just mentioned. But, you know, I think that, you know, a four-lane road can be much more feasible, much more safety conscious. And uh, we just really need to look at that because the economy has changed, needs have changed, and we need to see what we can do to promote business in these areas. Any other? Uh, Commissioner Thaxton. I wanted to try to get a little bit of clarification here because the terminology where these things stop and start is not really clear and we use different roads for the different plans. But, um, <clears throat> Mr. Howe, when, when I'm looking at the five-year transportation plan. Um, I'm assuming that the part that goes from Alby to Bird Bay is what we would commonly call the north segment. And we have there... Um, what page are you on, Commissioner? Um, sorry, there were page 11. unnumbered page two. Oh, oh you're on that. Isn't that the agenda item we're on now? Yeah, but it's yeah, it's, it's more detailed on uh, this this group, page uh, ten or eleven. It's eleven. Eleven. I'm just talking about in the long in the um, tentative work program report. Yeah, well, I have my notes on this one, so let me try it on, That's on, fine. on this yes, one. Uh, yes, but <clears throat> Alby to uh, Bird Bay is the, uh, the northern segment. Okay, so anyways, it's... That's um, on page 11. Mm -hmm. Got it. So then um, why is it um, 7.2 in 11.12 on page 11, and it's 7.6 in years 15.16 on the other chart? I'm going to have to ask FDOT to answer that one. 
didn't know there was a discrepancy. Hold on just a second, please. Pardon? On the third page of this document, it shows it's 7.2. Really? Okay. Then the only thing that needs to be explained is the 7.6 on the second page. Is the one the construction and the other the right-of-way and engineering? Well, if it was, it would have the 7.2 in the other one for, wouldn't it? You would have it in both places. It's the same project number, so probably they just forgot to take that one off, I would imagine. Okay. Good morning, Commissioners. Manon Lavoie for the record. When you look at this chart here that we commonly call the add, delete, defer, you have Venice Bypass FM number 198017-5. You have on the second page of the add, delete, defer the $7.6 million in 1516. That's construction funding. Okay. If you look at the next page of your add, delete, defer, you will have in the rescheduling advance the same FM number 198017-5, the right-of-way $7.2 million in 1112. From this document here that you look at, page 11, you only have the right-of-way identified, and you should have in your binders, I'm not sure which tab it's under, an errata sheet that add the construction because the construction was added after the printing of this version of the work program. And what year is the construction? The construction for segment 1516 for this 198017-5, which is the Norton segment. So the only thing that's on that page then are the changes. The only thing that is on this is the add, delete, and defer. What was added to the work program, what was changed from one year to the other, or what was deleted. I think I probably could have had a simpler format. Okay. Well, the chair is. Motion the recommended action, and I'd also like to just make sure the concerns are summarized, you know, that we've talked about here this morning, if that's appropriate. Because it is a draft work program, and I think the, you know, what we're basically doing is just endorsing a work program, but we're also identifying the concerns that people have brought up. I have a motion to approve with the concerns to be added. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. I have a motion by Commissioner McClash, a second by Mayor Grover Bryant. Any further discussion? Commissioner Hayes. Could you please use your microphone? Thank you. I forgot it was gone. Yes, under discussion, you know, Mr. McClash brought up a good point. There's been some discussion here. But since it is just a draft, I think those, as being part of record, they should be brought back to us anyway before we do the final. So I don't know whether it's necessary that. What I would request, though, is that we be given a report on all those issues that have been discussed this morning so we can have those to reference when it does come back again. That was my only comment. Any further discussion? A point of information on the timing of this. Statutorily, we need to have our comments, if any, to the department by about January 15th, Secretary. Yes, the 31st. December 31st. December 31st, excuse me, even sooner than I had recalled. So I would encourage us to go ahead and make the comments in the letter format, and then I'll get a full response to you and send it out electronically as soon as we have it. And I can even bring it back in January to give you a full report. But I don't want to hold up our comments on the work program. Right. Thank you. I have Commissioner Turner, then I have Commissioner Patterson. Just to clarify, 
a lot of the discussion was to make a different decision, and I'm curious what the point of including the discussion in the amendment or the motion is. What outcome do we expect from staff? Mr. McClash? Well, I had several that I had concerns with as far as it may not be exactly the same issues as the Venice Bypass, but the comments that I have, you know, there's some reservations, you know, that I put on the record questioning whether maybe our staff would do something else to recommend. Are we expecting this plan to be revised to reflect the concerns that were expressed by members? Not the draft, but the final product when it goes to the legislature can be amended any time, my understanding, until, you know, the work program is approved by the legislature. So usually it takes a collaborative effort with FDOT to be in agreement with the MPO. If you do some changes, correct, Mr. McClash? No, that's correct. So, I mean, there can be changes after the first of the year, but it's a requirement of law that we have at least, I guess it's a requirement of law that we have to do this draft plan. At least a draft that's put forward. Commissioner Patterson. Well, the comments regarding the bypass vary depending on the perspective of the individual making the comments. So I don't know how you put those comments in signed by the chair as the total will of the MPO. You know, you could put some members felt, and that's about all you could do. Right. That's what the intention of the motion was, just to summarize like we do the minutes when they usually have the comments of the members and stating the concerns, just to attach it as part of the record. The point of clarification on the motion, but it does not, the motion was not intended to alter what is being proposed on the Venice bypass. That's how I took it. No, right. Secretary Kan. I think Mr. Howe just answered my question, which is the question is Commissioner McClash or Commissioner Garofalo that you all stated, I can come back and we can discuss. The Venice bypass is there's nothing really there for us to come back and respond to. The decision of whether to include or not include belongs to this board. It's for us to ratify again today. Excuse me, Chair. Is that correct? That's correct. Commissioner, I'm sorry, Councilman Bennett. If in some manner we are appending comments or whatever, I would like to make sure that my previous two memoranda are included. What do you mean by memoranda? I submitted to this organization two memoranda at the last meeting that dealt with this subject in some detail. I hope they've been read. If they haven't, I hope the people that made the comments will read them. Commissioner Thaxton. Could you please use your mic? Sharing with Donna here. Thank you. Einstein said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, and I kind of feel like that's what we're doing here today. I remember when I first came on this board, one of my first transportation quotes ever was, adding lanes to cure congestion is like loosening one's belt buckle to cure obesity. We can do the six lanes, and then we're going to come back 10, 15, 20 years from now, and the six lanes are going to look just like the four lanes, just like the four lanes look like the two lanes, and we're going to be looking at six lanes. And so not only do we take these properties off the tax rolls, but we forever impair their ability to produce property taxes for the community that's affected, and that's both the city of Venice and Sarasota County. You can look at any city or county where these widening projects have happened, and through the years, as you whittle away the depth of these commercial properties, you whittle away their ultimate ability to produce commerce and, therefore, taxable resources. And that's what we're doing here. With each incremental step that we're taking, we diminish the value of the property, both in terms of the private property's owner's wealth and also the community's wealth long term. You know, the bypass was originally built to get people out of the business route and then put them somewhere else. Well, obviously, you can see what happened. The somewhere else became the business, and now the bypass is, in fact, the business route. It's much faster to go the business route than it is, and I wouldn't doubt that some of the Venice businesses 
um, that are along the original stretch are now very thrilled with that because they have the um, traffic being diverted their way now on the bypass. And um, so I guess uh, Pinecrest is now the ultimate bypass of Venice. But uh, I don't know. It, Mr. Werner makes some excellent points. Um, we are talking about a road whose um, original cost is going to um, be $45 million per mile, per mile. And that doesn't include um, all of the other losses that would be associated with it um, long term. So it's, it is it's difficult to support. Well, I have, I have Mayor Groover Bryant, then I have Commissioner McClash, then I have Commissioner Barbetta. Um, I just want a point of clarification. Um, there has not been a current mobility study, is that correct? Based on uh, what Commissioner Garofalo was commenting on, the fact that what they have done has helped to alleviate some of the congestion. If, that, if there hasn't been a recent mobility study, maybe that might be a, a good prerequisite before moving forward. Okay. Okay. Commissioner McClash? You know, it's tough to sit here and probably be the secretary of, of this district when you're getting mixed messages. Uh, this was our top rated priority. For years. I mean, this is not something just he came up with the idea, let's throw some money at the six laning concept. It's been on the MPO's plan for over 20 years. Um, it's been stated over and over again that we wanted to get this done. We wanted to fund this. Uh, about three years ago, I believe we even went back and redid kind of the, the PD&E a little bit, updated the PD&E, had community meetings down there. We asked them, go challenge yourselves and figure out a better way to do this. So I'm not sure what you call a mobility study, but you know, it wasn't like we took something from 1980s and just you know, still kept it together. Um, it's been a point of frustration to get this off of our list of projects that we haven't completed. So, you know, the comments today are a little shocking because, you know, with all due respect to my members, you know, you've been here, you know, if you left it on the list as number one. And if you weren't serious, then we should have taken it off of number one because when we go and send our priority list, it was number one so that they could fund it for you. And now it's funded and everybody's saying, well, maybe we have a better thought on this $30 million. Um, and the only reason it's being advanced is so that you could save money on the right-of-way, <coughs> is my understanding, because if, if you buy a right-of-way now, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper. So if you want to back up and re redo it, um, that's fine, but you better do it real quick because you have 30 somewhat million dollars of right-of-way in this upcoming year based upon you, you all saying it was number one priority. Well, my, my, my question, though, was just... Uh really a point of clarification just based on so many of the different remarks that have come up today that are kind of implying that things have so many things have changed so I, you know I'm just kind of wanting to understand that yeah. myself and, and, and with, with all due respect I don't think a lot of things have changed I think it's always been a frustrating project where some people don't want a six lane and some people want to you know six lane and you know you have to rely upon you know the city you know which is what I do, you know, from this position, because I'm not an expert down in South County, but all I know from being on this MPO, you know, since 1990 and being on the CAC before that, we've lived with this project and, and, and have been trying to get it done. And we challenged Venice to go back and redo the plans to save right away. It was my understanding about, what, three years ago, and I think they did that, and, and uh, this is the outcome. So to say it was just, you know, how long is long? You know, I have, years? I'm sorry. I have Commissioner Barbetta, uh, Mayor Kirshner, and then Commissioner Saxton. And I'll take the money. Commissioner Patterson, and please, uh, after that, we have got to fish or cut bait. Yeah, yeah I hear you. Yeah, a couple things, uh, Joe, with all respect. Uh, things, things have changed. Remember, it was put on 20 years ago, and I keep hearing the argument, well, it's been on for so long, they're entitled. Well, remember when it was put on, it was put on as a bypass. Commissioner Thaxton you know, hit the nail right on the head. Land use patterns changed in the city of Venice. They voluntarily changed their land use patterns to turn this into a viable commercial corridor. It's no longer the bypass it was meant to be. It's turned into a commercial enterprise. So that's a drastic change in my opinion, number one. Number two, this MPO board did recognize the fact that it had been on there a long time and did modify things by asking them to bifurcate this whole right. plan 
and it turned into three different pieces. The two of the pieces have been so-called corrected and reduced to four lanes, at least that's my understanding. One. One piece. Two or six, is right. Yeah. And not by the city of Venice, just by us. Right. And I think the understanding of the realization is coming, at least from a few of us here, that we need to do that for this piece, too. Because right now I'm looking at just one little piece, less than a half a mile, 0 .472 of a mile, $7.3 million just for right away. And as John said, it's upwards of $40 million a mile. Where's the return on investment? Where's the viable? Where's the viability of spending that kind of money, uh, again, taking commercial property off the rolls, uh, changing the pattern of people going in front of businesses so it's even, to me, more congested to try to get into the correct lane to go to that business? I, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. And there's other, other ways of redirecting this money that, are, that better suits not only the Venice, but the, the, the whole MPO area. Mayor Kirshner. Yeah, I, I can't really say much more than Commissioner Barbetta has said, and, and I, I certainly empathize with what uh, you're saying, Commissioner McClash, and, and you know, I, we've sat here for four years, you know, approving uh, that it sits there, but uh, at the same time, it's it's the, the tail wagging the dog for me, again, for us to, to not have this conversation with the entire Manatee, Sarasota region and be able to go back to our constituents with everything that uh, I think we hear from uh, citizens, particularly this past year, uh, the way things have changed from the time uh, I came into office in 2007 to where we are now with the fiscal forecast for at least the next two to three years continuing to be very bleak <coughs> to, to somehow say that this is that entitlement that by virtue of the fact that that 20-year conversation has been going on for so long that we we continue to, to put the blinders up and and we show, you know, uh, strength in the face of adversity to go forward with it. It's, it's not prudent and that's not what we're here to, to do for our constituents and I don't think again for the business owners there, for the citizens of Venice, if the conversations had, if I, I would really find it hard to believe that that's the most prudent thing. The, the last thing I'd mention is by virtue of this logic that uh, we need to wait for transit to get better or whatever else. All you have to do is come into the downtown area of the city of Sarasota where 41 is a four-lane road. Uh, we, we better six-lane this now where you have uh, double the volume of traffic there now, uh, and we need to put it on now for a couple hundred million in right-of-way acquisition and six-lane it. But it and, and that goes back to what Commissioner Thaxon said. It, it's, it's not intelligent. It's not smart planning. Everything we ever hear about... Uh, how terrible planning is and our roads are in the state of Florida. I think we're, we're being a party to that uh, today by just continuing this on by virtue of the arguments that are being made. Madam Chair. I'm sorry. I have Commissioner Thaxton, then I have Commissioner Patterson. Right. Okay. Commissioner Thaxton, and I am very cognizant of the time, ladies and gentlemen. No. It's an important it's issue. Part of the um, part of the confusion here is that we're attempting this roadway, at least in, in my perspective is, is two completely different roadways with two completely different characteristics. And, and this is where Joe and I slightly, um, Commissioner Barbetta and I slightly different. Um, we tend to look at it from Venice Avenue as being the dividing line because Venice Avenue really is the dividing line of the character of, of the road. From Venice Avenue north to where the bypass begins um, is an area that um, I would support still at this time with the six laning. I, I think it was just too much um, water under the bridge, and you know I, I think the configuration of the commercial businesses down there, although are not perfect, but they are certainly much um, better for additional loss of right of way. It's that entire Venice Avenue section south that I think it would be a mistake to continue the present day discussion of six laning. So, you know, we have it at the the Gulf Coast. Um, Boulevard or whatever, which I believe is somewhat south of, of the avenue. So I think part of the confusion lies in that we're saying two things because we are saying two things. There's, there's in my opinion, should be two completely different treatments um, of this road. Commissioner Patterson, and then I have well, Secretary Can. What's before us at this particular moment does not deal with the southern segment. Um, it deals only with the north two segments of the three-segment project, 
all told. It's the intersection which has some little bit broader than just the intersection widening associated with it, um, and the north portion. And if, in fact, the board does vote to um, uh, uh, take out any portion of that, I would hope that we would at least separate those two, um, those two issues. But, you know, it's really ironic because as we speak, they are widening 301, and I sat here for years while that 301 project could have been discussed even two years ago, could have been discussed, and it really feels more like one jurisdiction kind of wants the funding from another jurisdiction more than um, they want to second guess the planning of, of the other jurisdiction, and, and maybe I'm completely wrong, and if so, um, forgive me, but I don't know how you say to a jurisdiction that says this is our vision and we've been waiting for these fundings, I'm sorry, we don't agree with you, and we did until six months ago, but now all of a sudden, now that you have the money, we want to give it to someone else. Um, I think a six-lane road, if it ends up with dedicated bus lanes and a nice median, can be attractive. And I think the verdict's still out on what will happen to 301. Um, Commissioner Thaxton's point about what happens to the businesses on the sides is very valid. Um, but I'm not sure how valid it is for that north segment, which is what I think we're really discussing here, whether that one should be included or not. Um, it is a very congested segment of road, that, that north segment. And um, I did check with our own county transportation staff on that to make sure that, you know, that need was really there. And when we talk about Northport relieving that congestion, you know, I know your ambition is to develop into something where people will work in Northport and live in Northport, but you aren't there yet. And there really are only two main corridors headed up to where the jobs tend to be. And, you know, it's, it's still an artery where people are trying to get from one place to another. And the last point I want to make is um, I remember uh, at the county commission table having a lot of Venice people come in and saying, I wish you'd hurry up and do this. Please buy the right of way because we don't know whether to plan to expand or not, and we're just in limbo. So um, at, at least, I guess, let's make the decision <laughs> fairly quickly. Um, and if, in fact, there are votes to take away the funding for the north part, um, and put it somewhere else. Let's separate that from the intersection because the intersection is problematic. No question. Secretary Kim. I understand the issue with the timing here, but the, uh, the, uh, what we're talking about, the, the motion, as, as I understand it, is to accept the work program as we have presented it today. Uh, I need to know what y'all want to do on Venice. And, I'm going to take it as a yes to proceed if the motion passes. Um, yes. And I will plan on buying the right of way beginning July the 1st. We have spent $10 million to date. Uh, we've done the pd &E a couple of times to, uh, to take a look at, at different uh, ways of getting this done. We've done a value engineering study to help reduce the cost. Uh, we've, we've basically completed design of the whole thing. Uh, so we're going to proceed if I get a yes vote. I just want everyone to, to be clear on that. Uh, if not, I need to note also because I want to I want to find out what to do with this money. The state of the economy is a very important. You know, it's on everybody's mind. It certainly, is on the legislature's mind. If I don't proceed with the right of way acquisition with this 36 million dollars, they're going to assume that I don't need it, and it's going to it's going to go to some other part of state government. And I've got to deal with my work program to where, where we're talking about so that, so that that doesn't happen. Uh, there's a lot of SU money. That's your money. It's, that's the MPO's decision on what to do with it. It's always been the, the, the MPO's decision on how to proceed on this project. But there is some DS. That's, that's state money. We've got $13 million in next year. I got to decide what to do that because they, they'll grab it. For, I'm assuming. I got to, as I say, I got to make my decisions based on assuming it's going to disappear. 
So I don't want that to happen. No one wants that to happen. So I've got the ability to move that somewhere in my district uh, to make sure that it, it goes towards the purpose it was intended for in the first place. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Well, we have a motion on the table with a second to approve the tentative five-year work plan as presented by FDOT today. Uh, Ms. Eubanks, it's just a voice, uh, a, a voice count. I, we don't have, okay. Um, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. 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 Better count hands. <sighs> All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed, raise your right hand. Motion passes nine to five. Thank you all.